What's going on, people? Paul here again. I got another radio for y'all. It's actually another another DVD player from Kenwood. Uh, it's the Kenwood X Line DDX 492. And you says, you know, probably thinking to yourself, well, doesn't that look like the previous video with the DDX 392? Uh, what's the difference? Well, the main difference between this one and the 392, which sold for 349, uh, this one for 379 um, has built-in HD. So if you're, you know, CD has an HD radio then this right here would be good good for that for your city that we can get you uh, your know, local digital stations and if you're not sure if you if your town has you know HD radio you can go to hdradio.com see if I can find the icon hdradio.com and look up your state and city uh, or the closest city and see if they, you know if they you know support HD radio and if they do and it's if and it's your favorite music then you're good to go anyway uh, this is a two-year warranty radio. Uh, the average price is going to run between 360 to 380. Um, it's got Bluetooth, a Sirius XM Ready, Pandora for iPhone, Android, uh, five-band equalizer, which I'll get into here in a little bit, and uh, four volt, four volt, three, uh, three pre-outs, and you know, and all kinds of other features. So anyway, let's get the box open. We'll see what's on the inside, and we'll go from there. Alright, let's get this box open here. Alright, open it up. First thing I see, uh, it looks like a, the parking brake extension wire. It's, it's what this like green wire is for. They extend the wire because it's not long enough. Uh, over here is the, the trim ring. It's a plastic ring around a styrofoam piece. This is the trim ring to cover and hide any metal pieces after the radio is installed. Uh, we got the microphone. This is what you use to talk hands free in. Uh, here's the power wiring harness. Without this, the radio won't, will be nothing. And here's the, the manuals with the uh, with the warranty card. And on the inside of the package, along with the manuals, because there's different languages, uh, we got the installation or, or, or CD removal keys and installation screws to help you install the radio in certain install kits. That's all for that. Alright, there's nothing else in the top part, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and see if I can slide out here. Looking in, there's nothing else in the box. Set that off to the side. Alright, got some styrofoam here. Help it, you know, for packaging. Slide that way over here. And we got nice... Uh, Thin plastic bag that never seems to come off just right. Uh, let's see, we got the this little plastic sheeting which helps keep it from being damaged while shipping or getting scratched and stuff. And you pretty much have to destroy this plastic sheet. It looks like there's two sheets on here. That looks like I, I didn't destroy this as bad as I thought it was going to. I might do the second one there. Yeah, I don't know why there's two of them. Usually there's just one. All right, those those two pieces. Uh, the bottom piece here. This is the the cage, uh, mostly for custom installations. You really won't need that. But anyway, here's the radio. Uh, let's get it mounted up. We'll see what's going on back here, and then we'll see what the party is in here. All right, we got it all mounted up here, and as usual, we'll start from this end and. Make our way way over here, and we'll see what's going on back here. Uh, the first thing I see right here, uh, this is a input for the optional Sirius XM module. Uh, that's optional. It usually runs around $100 for, for that. Uh, this piece right here, this is the, the plug-in for the wiring harness with a 10 amp fuse. And these are little two, dad, two doodads over here. Uh, the light green one, this is your parking brake switch. Uh, this is what you use to ground... The wire on the parking brake to uh, so you can watch videos while you're driving. Uh, this purple, if you can see it with the tag upside down, it's a purple wire with a white stripe. This is for the reverse wire. 
So when you when you install an optional reverse camera, you take this wire and hook it to your reverse wire on your steering column. So when you do put your car or truck here or whatever in the reverse, uh, it will send a signal down this wire into the radio and interrupt whatever screen you're looking at so you can uh, see what you're backing into with the, with the rear view camera. All right, got those two out of the way here. Uh, this is a three foot extension, USB. I'm gonna pop this little cap off right here. See, USB, you can stick a thumb drive in there, your iPhone, Android, you know, charge them up, and uh, you can also, like I said, you know, with a thumb drive, play music or, or videos on it. And it's three feet long, so you can put it anywhere you want. Uh, over here, this is the microphone input, this left port. Uh, that's where you plug the microphone in. Over here, you had iPod slash AB input, uh, which is the cable that you get from Pioneer. I mean, not Pioneer, sorry. Kenwood. Sorry, Kenwood. Uh, right here, you have video output. This yellow port on top. Uh, if you have more than one screen, this will be the first screen. If you have like, like some flip down screens or headrest screens or whatever, you can have this putting the signal out to those screens as well. Uh, the bottom yellow one is the reverse camera or R cam input. So that's where your, your rear view camera input will go to for the video. Up here, you got rear, front, and subwoofer 4 volt pre outs. Uh, you can have multiple different amps um, in here. If you have just bass, you can hook them here. If you have highs, you can hook them here. If you have highs and bass amps, you can use all four of them using like two channel amps, four channel amps, uh, bass amp. And my camera's going all over the place. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, um, and last but not least is the antenna input. This right here. This little port right here. Camera moves always moved out of the way. And it is, uh, you, you might need an antenna adapter to plug in here to catch FM stations. All right, that's pretty much it for the back of the radio. Let's flip it around and power it up. And All right, we're getting the boot up here. We got the Kenwood logo. Um, the first screen that pops up after the Kenwood logo is the demonstration. It's like an well, initial setup screen. Uh, demo or demonstration, click off. Language, if you speak a different language than English, you can click here and select that. The AV input I showed you on the back. The, this is where you know you select if you want to if you use an iPod or actual audio video inputs. If you are installing a reverse camera, uh, you can click this on. That way you can actually it'll actually do it automatically for you. And panel color. This is the panel right here. Uh, you can select whatever color you want. You can have it select let's say red or blue or or you can go to user and select whatever you want or go to scan whatever um back out there and then you just click finish and uh, before i go any further looks like the the radio has a nice glossy black um uh, out up front it gives it a nice sleek look here on the outside we got the um that little red triangle which is the kenwood logo it also serves as the reset button uh, this button right here is your DVD, CD, uh, eject button. And of course, this is your DVD, CD slot. Here's the, the Kenwood Exelon, uh, Exelon word. <laughs> Down here, we got DVD, Dolby Digital, HD radio, which is this big orange HD right there. Uh, Kenwood, uh, Sirius XM Ready, Bluetooth, and DDX492, which is the bottle number right here in the corner. Over here, we got menu, AV, which is audio video, or if you hold the button down, you can, it'll, it'll, you can actually manually turn the camera on if you have the reverse camera hooked up. Down here, we, we got telephone controls. If you hold it down, you can use voice. If you have the um, iPhone connected for Siri. And then right here is your volume button, which if you use like in the source, let's say HD radio, which is, you know, tuner. Um, it'll turn the, the, the mute on or, or attenuation. And if you press and hold it down, I believe, it, as you go to the, the audio uh, section, to change the audio sections, and uh, um, like I say, you know, for the AV, if you press and hold it down, it'll actually interrupt the signal. And of course, telephone shows your, you know, telephone outgoing, incoming, Missed uh, your phone book will be listed here under phone book all your words and stuff people's names and mode you know
phone device, you know, that's whatever phones are paired, auto response, SMI notify, like if you get a text message, it'll, it'll ding for you. Um, and ringtone changer. All right, that's enough for this right here. Uh, we'll go, go, go to the menu. Menu is the top menu, which you know, said right there. That's your time right here. You got iPod, HD radio, or tuner. The first thing the radio to look for is to see if the radio, the, the station that you're dialing in, is HD radio ready. If not, it'll switch over to analog, which is regular, regular, you know, radio. Uh, right here we got tuner, I mean not tuner, um, telephone, which is Bluetooth, that's your hands-free phone calls. I was actually just in the menu showing you all those steps. All source, um, disc, CD, DVD, Bluetooth audio, Pandora, and then setup. So, uh, after saying all that, we'll go to iPod. Of course, I don't have an iPhone or iPod plugged into it, but it will show like album art, idle, uh, title, song, album, you know, stuff like that. And then this is like a little quick list an iPod HD radio telephone iPod HD radio telephone so you, these are your three top choices AT, HD radio got your presets over here uh, that's your channel changing uh, you get your band which is FM1 FM2 FM3 AM uh, seek uh, you can see right here, it starts seeking through your presets for your stations. You press seek again. It's, uh, of course, I'm in A right now. Let me get back to FM. Uh, it's dialed in. If you can see right there, your radio station is one station at a time. So you can, you can really find a station that you want to listen to. You press seek again. It goes through and tries to find the, long, the, the strongest station to listen to. Uh... That's all for that. Click menu. Of course, in telephone, I was already in there showing you all this stuff. Voice command. No voice device. That would be iPhone. Uh, all source. Uh, this actually lists everything that would be uh, considered a source, like CD, DVD, USB, even though it's, it may not be plugged in, like the AS, like the Sirius XM or USB thumb drives. They'll still take, take you to a, a screen. So, in order for these to work properly, you have to make sure things are plugged into them. Pandora, uh, you get your, you know, track forward, thumbs up, you know, tag, whatever. The same features you have on your phone, you can use that through the radio. Let's see, all source. Uh, Bluetooth audio, if you, if you can wirelessly Bluetooth your music through the radio, and then see what song title and address and all that stuff, address, uh, the album. Uh, let's see, all source. Uh, of course, telephone was already in there. AV input, that's just, you know, signal from somewhere else, like an Xbox or a DVD player. Standby, it just turns the radio off without actually turning the radio off. Be no music, nothing playing. Uh, let's see. Menu. Uh, setup. Uh, setup, you got audio, display, input, and system. And audio, you got your fader and balance. Uh, actually, I think I'm still off. Here we go. Audio. Because here we go. The fader and balance. It's a grid-like system. You can poke and click where, wherever you want the fader and balance to go to, or you can dial in using the arrow keys. Let's say if you don't like it and you want to go back to the center, and you can't really get it there, you press the center button and it'll make the centers for you. Uh, equalizer. We got drive EQ, and drive EQ is. The radio is why you're saying I'm going to do it for you, or you can do preset uh, stations, not stations, um, equalizer settings, or if you're down here where it says user, where's it at? Here it is. You can actually dial in however you want your your uh, your, your equalizer setting, you, and you can also use like, like hit click here, go up, and uh, you know, kind of dial in what you want. You get 80, 80 hertz, 200 hertz, 800 hertz, 4 kilohertz, and 12.5 kilohertz. Basically, it's bass, mid, and treble. And right down here, you got your subwoofer controls. Goes to uh, probably negative 10, plus 10, I think. Let me make sure. Nope. Whoa, that's pretty far back. Wow. That's, it goes way down there. Still going down there. Wow. <laughs> negative 50 on the subwoofer level controls.
It's taking forever. I'm holding down the button on the screen on the subwoofer level. So you can go to negative 50 or positive 10. And the negative 50, I don't have, I have no recollection of what that you can even sound like. Anyway, <laughs> got loudness that makes all the volume louder. Uh, X over or crossover. Uh, if you're really, you know, tuned to uh, however you want, you like, like, you feel like multiple amps, you want things to sound a certain way, then you come in here and actually dial out the RC outputs to make them sound a, a, a certain way before you get to the amp. Kind of like for, for tickies. Volume offset, it just kind of changes the volume from, you know, from inside the radio. And, and I guess that's it for audio. I got display. Uh, if, the, if it's too bright, uh, you can turn it off or on. You know, if it's too bright, to turn it on. It'll kind of dim it down a hair. User customize. You can select what style background. You can see kind of peeking out through there. So it's changing it. And of course, panel color. Um... Click on edit and you can kind of really dial in a certain color that you like. Uh, back out of here. On screen display, you want the clock, yes. Uh, demonstration off. Scroll. Uh, if, if the song title is too long, to scroll across the screen, you can either turn it off, do it once, or continue scrolling. Oop, did I miss everything? So display, scroll. There we go. Menu customize. This is where you can actually put used icons closer. So let's say you're an iPod here and you use Sirius XM, you can select it there. Uh, let's say you don't want uh, HD radio, you can select the uh, USB. So you actually the menu is customizable, which is pretty neat. Uh, screen adjust, go into here. Uh, it just gives you a way to really customize the the, the black and the contrast stuff. Uh, video output, uh, United States, Europe, United States, Europe. So depending on where you're at or what kind of video you're watching, you, you, you may have to mess with this. But usually if you're over here, you watch it this. You're over there, you watch that because they're pals. Uh, let's see. Uh, input. We get AV input. You got either AVN or iPod. It just tells the radio how to interpret the signals coming in. R cam or reverse camera input or interrupt. Uh, it just it, if you want the, every time you put in reverse to interrupt the screen, do this. If you, if you don't like it, just press off. Uh, system. Of course, we got language. Uh, if you want the, the clock to synchronize with the radio data system, you can do that too to kind of keep it on how to do it yourself. Uh, the radio beats has a remote sensor. You can turn those off or on. Uh, set up menu as if, as if you want to uh, record or have the radio save certain memory settings. Bluetooth setup, this is below that. Uh, we got paired device, uh, it shows you all the devices that you're going to You can remove some if it's too many. Uh, pin code, it's, it's default 0000. If you want to change it to something else, you can. Uh, if you're searching or scanning for radio, this is what it'll be called. Uh, if it only shows the device address, and that's what it shows it here. Auto connect if you want the radio to automatically connect when it's turned on to your phone when it's powered up. Uh, AV key long press. If, so if you have an audio video input from somewhere else, um, you can program one of three buttons to automatically show this. So right now it says R cam. So if you click and hold down R cam. It would show, you know, that particular uh, video input feed. Uh, let's see, where's it? Uh, there's the serial number for the radio. You can find it on the box as well. They also put it inside the radio, which is pretty neat. And touch panel adjust. Um, that's just for firmware information. Uh, that's if you if you can't really click on something, you can adjust the go into here. You can, you can actually it tells you what to do. And you, click where it tells you to click and then it'll make it configures itself. Uh, that's pretty much it from what I can see. You know, uh, the only difference I'd say between the 492 and the 392 is the 492 adds uh, HD radio. 
and it does have a 6.2 inch screen because of the Kenwood Exelon, so the, the S screen is a little bit larger than normal Kenwood screens. And uh, for all the features, that's, that's it. All right, that was the Kenwood Exelon DDX 492. Uh, that says a two year warranty. The average price is going to probably run between 360 to 380. Um, it does have a 6.2 inch screen, as well as a HD radio, of course, Bluetooth, Series XM, Pandora. Illumination, four volt preouts, all kinds of features, and of course, as well as DVD player and touchscreen. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, you can just leave a comment down below, uh, thumbs up, we'll hit like and stuff, and then, uh, and I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all, superb day, and please subscribe.